the worship of testimony. Now, this is good. Our, Bible, our gospel passage today is talking about generations. And we are told, they are well, well calibrated, 14, 14, 14. And every generation carries a testimony. Let your children listen to that. And finally, the worship of a long-lasting legacy. Long-lasting legacy. It is always good to ask. So don't just say that I have given my children a name. Ask yourself the quality of the name that you have given. We read history. And some of us are very good readers of both salvation history and civil history. And we know of men and women who lived thousands and thousands of years ago. But today we read about them. And we read as though whatever they did happened yesterday. The other day I was reading the history of Mesopotamia and I was, talking about, uh, I was reading about the, the, the nuptial blessings and their burial rites. And you see how fathers would bless their children. And this is what was happening 8,000 years B.C. Let us ask. 5,000 years to come, Will your name as a dad still be standing? Will your name as a mother still be standing? Number four, bless them with a discerning parent. Bless them with a discerning parent. Direct them God's way, not your way. Direct them God's way, not your way. Where I work at the university, Every time I meet students who are not doing their courses, they are doing the course of their mom, the course of their dad. So that the child who is pursuing what is not in their heart, they are pursuing what is in the heart of the dad. And eventually that may not help your son. It is important, dear moms, it is true that you may know more than they do, but listen to them. There is a reason why God gave you a head and gave your son a head. Independently. You have always seen when children are born with co-joined heads, doctors work very hard to separate the heads. The reason why your head is separate from your son is to allow him to think. And please allow him also to make mistakes and learn from them. Listen to them. Don't wake up and say, in this family, everybody will be a lawyer. Maybe they don't want a legal profession. Don't wake up and say, everybody here will become a doctor. Maybe they don't like medicine. Maybe some of you don't even like to see uh, people who are you know, ailing or even dead bodies. It may be your preference. Sit down with your son. Tell your son, my son, I would have really loved if you do medicine for this reason and this reason and this reason. And then you ask your son, what would you want to do? And your son will say, Daddy, I would want to do IT for this reason and this reason and this reason. From there, maybe you can look for a career guider. Somebody who can take them through career choice. Somebody who can give them that kind of therapy. And then eventually you can sit down. And then you ask, my son, what did you think? Daddy, I think about medicine. I think there is something you told me that I had not thought about. Ah, so the boy will not come to the university and go and see their chaplain or their counselor, tell them that I am here, I'm very angry because my dad um, bulldozed that I do this course. My dad bulldozed. It is not right. It is not right. Guide your children God's way. 
not your way. Take on the thoughts of God. Teach them the values you want them to live by. Never choose vices for your children. Guide them. Show them the values that you want them to live by. It is important. Now, on this, I want to say something that our parents need to take home. As you do all this, as you become a discerning mother to them, a discerning dad, please note this, that many a times, many a times, your favorite child may not be the one God will put his heart on. Teach them to depend on their heavenly father because you one day will die. He is the one who will take them where daddy can't. He is the one who will take them where mommy cannot. Introduce them to God.